Welcome everyone to day nine of the 24 Advent Crystals, and I'd like you to meet briefly. We'll be back to her. She's going to tell you what a wonderful person she is, is Amy Penterman. She has studied Tarot with me. She's also studied a lot of other mystical things and was very interested in helping me out today. So welcome, Amy, and we're going to go over to the box and see what stone you have. Thank you. Okay. She's day nine. It's the 9th of December. Unless I really screw up placing videos. Um, and for us, you know, it's what it's like for me to get these crystals out of here. Okay. She got obsidian. And obsidian technically isn't a crystal. It's glass. It's volcanic glass. It has a lot of wonderful features about it. And it's good for protection to block and absorb and transfer negative energy, clarity. Abyssidian is thought to release emotional, physical, and spiritual blockages. It's good for detoxification. Abyssidian is known for clearing ancient traumas and to detox you from them. It's good for personal growth. You can use it as a meditation stone to encourage you to, to deal with moving energies on and bringing energies into your life. It's physical healing. Obsidian has potential to promote physical healing. It's also spiritual healing. It helps you break negative mental patterns. It dissolves negative mental patterns if you concentrate with it. It, it helps with fear, jealousy, anger, and greed, something we've had no small amount of this year. Uh, Black Abyssidian um, is related to Gemini. And Abyssidian has been used across the country to make weapons, implements, tools, ornaments, and mirrors. You can see how shiny this one is. This is a piece I pulled out of my private collection that could be used as a blade. And they did they did ship these and make tools and weapons out of them, and as well as surgical blades, cutting instruments, things to strip the... Um, skins and stuff native americans used it a great deal and it comes in all kinds and sizes and this is a giant chunk of abyssidian that i have it's called rainbow abyssidian and i don't know if you can see it but there are like little rings of color come out if i were to be able to take and i've tried using a black light it doesn't work with this um if you take this out in the sun all of those rings glow different colors it's absolutely beautiful um and that was one of the first crystals I ever bought. And I bought it for a friend of mine. And when they died, they made sure I got it back. And they were a person who definitely needed some work with their negativity. And so we're going to talk, we're going to speak now to the Earth Mother. We're all thankful that our mother, the Earth, for she gives us all that we need for life. She supports our feet as we walk upon her, gives us the joy that she continues to care for us as she has since the beginning of time. To our mother, we're sending greetings and thanks and thanking her for leaving the stone, the, the breadcrumb of obsidian to remind us how we can heal ourselves. And with that, I am going to cut over to Miss Amy Penderman and you can talk to them about what you do. What I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, what you're learning to do, you can teach dog about what you're learning to do or all of it. Well, I'm a stay-at-home dog mom right now, mm -hmm. and I'm studying shamanism. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm currently doing. And I'm kind of, I'm relocated from, you know, the very cold to the warm climate to be by the beach mm -hmm. for healing purposes and, you know, just to work with spirit in a very clean and, you know, uh, being by the water is, you know, so important to me. But anyway, this was just a very, um, uh, you know, gradual, but organic, you know, evolution for mm -hmm. me. So this obsidian is amazing because it works you were working with energies you want to just be as free of any kind of negative energies and i one of the very first um spiritual counselors i touched base with was in door county wisconsin 
And she sent me a very small piece of obsidian folded up in a paper. And this is probably back in, I don't know, 1990 something. Anyway, but it was fragmented. But her effort was so pure. You know, she wanted me, this was one of the first things, have this obsidian for mm -hmm. protection and for negative energies. Always protect yourself. And then, mm -hmm. you know, she got me into meditation. So that was actually the very first stone that I was introduced to on my spiritual journey. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah, I think so too. So you said um, they use it as a tool. Native American, what continent or, you know? All over, everywhere where Abyssinian can be found, especially uh, in Central and South America where they had lots and lots of volcanoes. Okay, and, South America. Uh -huh, but okay. it's also the Native American tribes and uh, the indigenous people in the North Used it. I mean, it was used all up and down. As a matter of fact, it was a big trading item in the time when the indigenous people were going back and forth. I mean, their trade networks within our continents between the North and South America was incredible. And that was a very powerful thing to be able to get a hold of Abyssinian. And it does, if you've ever been around it, when I get the bags of flakes and I use these when I use these in a grid, I always warn people to be very careful of the edges because they're sharp enough to cut you. And yes. Now let's talk about how old volcanic glass is. How old is volcanic glass? Because how old and the reason is the earth? see, this is what I wanted to talk about. I am finding out that I am a stone goddess, like mm -hmm. back eons and eons mm -hmm. ago i mean now how far back this originates i haven't figured out but it's i read someplace and please 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 don't hold me to it but i did just it could have been before soul mm -hmm. don't age and so but i don't have the documentation or the article in front of me but at any rate um you know somebody I had a hot stone massage once. Mm -hmm. um, I was working in radiation therapy and it was so healing to me, Nancy, that I had to understand what was going on. I had no idea what was going on. And I was so transformed by that. You would be. Hot stone yeah. massage. It was it basalt. Out, it would draw out. I mean, it transforms the negative. There's only so much radiation anybody should be around no matter what. Right. But these basalts, okay, so I was so transformed by that. I sought out a uh, massage therapist who did hot stone massage. Mm -hmm. And the original hot stone massage um, originated in Arizona. Uh, there mm -hmm. was a therapist who had so much arthritis or, you know, injury in her hands that she said, well, I got to figure out a different way to do this because my hands hurt and she still wanted to do massage. So mm -hmm. she picked up basalt stones and created this healing modality called the stone. And so I went to find somebody to teach me that. And this gal put a basalt stone in my hand and I damn near fell over. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. And, you know, I sat there, she had to get me some water and it's like, what is happening? And she was thinking, no, I'm not going to let you come to my class because, you know, you're a radiation therapist and not a massage. But she saw my reaction to that stone. And she said, okay, you can come. Mm -hmm. So, because yeah, I did have alive. the Stones background. Alive. They have oh, energy. sure. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And Abyssidian is 20 million years old because it's formed when the earth developed enough of a crust and enough of a thing for volcanoes to go up through it and melt out impurities. So, 20 million years. I, wow. have, I have a fossil that's in the collection of the advent stones that's 500 to 200 million years old. It's and how, how old was obsidian? I'm sorry. 20 million. 20 million. 500. Wow. Yeah, but see, the earth has had a lot of... That Linda Grindle, she is an old soul, isn't well, she? <laughs> yeah, she liked it. She liked that she got a fossil and not just, you know, and it was, and yeah. that, the way they come, but 
um, yeah, that's, I have some stromitolite that's as old as that um, shell too. That was one of the first life forms we know of that was on the earth. And then when the earth became a giant snowball and had the was it 10, 10, million, 10 million year rest where most of the planet was covered and very few things, we were lucky we have any life left on this planet after that. And if the, we were like a giant snowball and then uh, plants did grow enough to create carbon dioxide, to create the whole cycle that let our life come out of it. But I wasn't aware. Now, this is so interesting. We, this is one of the, you know, little golden nuggets that you always provide for us yeah. because you have a really, you know, I get easily bored. Journey. And I get go to the next page. We've had, I believe it's six major die offs of all, all, almost all the life on this planet in our from our very 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 beginnings so when you can find a piece of st st stromatolite or um or like what you've got here or what the shell that was part of it all of them are different ages they reflect different things right. this stone came up when we needed to be purified isn't that interesting and so that's part of a journey that you take to your journey, your shamanic journey is part of in the South as you shed everything. And mm -hmm. all of this is part of getting rid of negative energy. So mm -hmm. for me, it, I feel it was very appropriate and I appreciate mm -hmm. it very much. So interesting. Also, you know, the other thing is um, they used it as mirrors. Oh yeah. You know, and up beautifully. Yeah, look at this one. You could if this if you set it in the right light and got it flat, you can see us being reflected. Our computer definitely being reflected. So and you know that's so interesting because you know some things just don't change. We still use mirrors today. We mm -hmm. you know for personal reflection or for whatever. It's you know. called in Western culture. It's called scrying. And you can do it by looking into a mirror or looking into a stone like that. And there's and a lot of shamanic traditions have scrying in them where they look in the stone and the stone sort of like a, a gypsy ball, you know, crystal ball. And you can find some beautiful, the stone that looks like a crystal ball behind me is actually red jasper. Oh, it is. Yeah. That's and, what I'm working with right now myself. Yeah, it protects... It protects you and helps you understand that anger is not always the wrong thing to have. And seeking your own protection is not always the wrong thing to have. Because it's a very red energy. If you hold that red jasper long enough, it stays cold because it's a true crystal. But you can almost feel like a pulse going through it. And Abyssidian, in some cases, you can do that too. Well, also, I use Obsidian on my cell phone and on my computers. Right. It blocks the electromagnetic. Right. And you can get them like at Amazon little disc things. Mm -hmm. So they're real handy. So interesting, Nancy. Thank you very much for sharing your uh, Advent stone calendar with me. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, it's just, it's all the different ways that crystals can enter our life and help us. And that's really what we should be looking for. I mean, there's some fascinating stones in here. We had some we haven't even gotten used to called egg yolk stone. I've never heard of it. It's a it's <laughs> a form of agate. It's a specific specifically from a certain area of Australia. Oh, interesting. So that's appropriate for the season as well. Yeah, and Australia has some of the oldest stones in the world. It's just hmm. been sitting down there letting them age. Um so there's just I Mm -hmm. I hadn't realized, um, I just wrote a whole bunch of, so I'm having a, a Vogel stone uh, cut specifically for me, mm -hmm. and it is a stone they use, um, it's like a healing wand. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure viewers, okay, so here is a healing wand, but this is um, calcite. 
calcite, selenite, and then it's got a little bit of um, purple. What is that? Nancy, help me out. Amethyst. Amethyst on the very top. And this is used for uh, back work. You can use this for massage on back work on the spine to subtly, subtly draw mm -hmm. out energy and, and for healing. But you know who else has healing wand is, you know, Kim Copeland. You see, yeah. You've seen her wand. Now that's a big wand. Yeah, that's you know. what I wouldn't want that aimed at me, I don't think, even if they knew what they were doing. <laughs> That's scary. She's got a big wand. <laughs> yeah, I know. She got that in Shasta. I, you know, no, no, no wand envy here with that crystal wand envy, but, you know, there's a lot of energy going on and I'm sure she has. Yeah, and that is kind of a word of warning for people. Yeah. So you're going to absolutely kind of know what you're dealing with. I mean, there's like we've had amazonite which is good for getting rid of anxiety and healing another healing stone a lot of the stones are good for healing because they fill in for what we don't carry in they hit and why we're on the earth so we can get in touch with those things mm -hmm. um and i'm trying to look um uh, one that was fun this was uh scott from uh that I do readings with on Sunday. Right. And this is a Chevron amethyst. We were talking about your amethyst. Yeah. It's, this one's a Chevron and it has a lot of white quartz. Beautiful. Dashes through. The Looks best layered. Little bitty Chevrons that I used to be able to get were out of Brazil. And at one point I realized I was having a hard time finding them. And the rock shop I went to uh, went around and called up all the other shops and got me kind of their last of their stock because it all came out of Brazil. And once COVID hit Brazil, it just closed the mines. Well, it closed did. the mines because it didn't close the mines for humane reason because they didn't want the people to get sick. A lot of people died. So they just didn't go out there and mine it anymore. And um, I used to use them. I have a grid I build that's based on the divine feminine. Okay. And it had a lot of chevron amethyst. It's it's a very it's another very protective stones. And then there's just some milky quartz that just lets the sun shine in. Right. Yeah. Right behind my shoulder mm -hmm. here. That's my Akash stone. Mm -hmm. I use that for Akash purposes. Mm -hmm. That was my husband's stone. He he's he's been, you know. He died and went to heaven like 20 years ago. So, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I'm using it. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. And it was, you know, okay, it's one of these things that came alive to me. Mm -hmm. And this, and we just talked about that, you know, two, five minutes ago, whatever. And it came alive to me and it brought me such joy. And I'm like crying with joy. And I'm going, nobody is ever going to understand me about the stone and it was my husband's and he had a rocker um mm -hmm. i got a mail i got an email nancy jean she'll understand <laughs> you know because it it was just something that came alive and it was a stone I was like, well, I where did you. this come from yeah, when I started working with crystals, I started asking, are you alive? And they said, of course we are. We just have a much longer. That's why I have the the a prayer to Mother Earth, because she's left all these other children to help guide us on our spiritual journey so that we can grow and improve. And I would hope that this just in this season which can be filled with a lot of tension, a lot of pressure, a lot of other stuff. It also can be filled with a lot of joy. If you remember a little kid, when you were a little kid, this season took forever to get through because we, we had these anticipation of great things coming. And these stones are reminding us of our living heritage of being on the earth and participating. And I hope people take those lessons away and grow with us. And I'm so glad Amy took my tarot class and then she went on. Now she's going on to be a shaman. So, right. 
Right. But the thing is that I want to say is, and Nancy, don't you cut this. <laughs> I don't cut. I don't edit. You think I can cut this. <laughs> So to me on YouTube, and I've already said this, and I... I don't even know why I really took Nancy's course, you know, tarot course. I didn't know if it was to learn tarot and, you know, Jeffrey's there with the symbolism and his take on it. So we got, you know, two people and a lot, a lot of information, but it also came with a lot of divine wisdom and experience. So to me, let me just say it. I feel like you are just the godmother of divinity, right? Because you just always give us these, you know, um, multiple different divination tools to learn and inspire us, you know? So oh, when I'm you. a few, of course, you know, and I mean it. I definitely mean it. And, I'm old enough to be everybody's godmother. I mean, really. <laughs> well, there should be, and maybe one day, um, I'll send you a plaque, Nancy, but there should be a plaque on your wall, Godmother of Divinity. That's how my view of you is. And I appreciate what you, mm -hmm. you freely give to us, you know, you mm -hmm. freely give to us. So, yeah. So, well, cause what am I going to do with it? I mean, otherwise it just runs around in my head like a bunch of little mice and, right. you know, and it's, it's, and really so much of this stuff is, it's like, I always knew it. I was talking with one reader and he said, if I ever have a real question about something, I know if I can call you, you, even if you can't put me, quote it to me exactly, you can head me in the right direction. And it's just because I've been doing it for so long, guys. You know, God knows. Yeah. I hope I'd gather something. Grab it now before the brain. I told I told Dr. Gale, I'm getting to the point where I'm going to say, I'm starting to say, do I really need that knowledge or I can move that trunk out and move another trunk of knowledge in, you know? Oh, geez. Yeah. Well, okay. So this, I really, okay. What I really loved about your course and what I really took home and leaned into eventually was the fact that at the time I wasn't reading cards reversed. Mm -hmm. And I, you said, because you're missing a lot of information. And I totally agree with that mm -hmm. because I have leaned into that now, but at the time when I was taking your class, and I just want to say this for people who want to take the class, it's on their bucket list or are taking the class. It's like um, at the time when I was doing it with Nancy, you know, I just did not have the bandwidth to take in reversals for some reason. Mm -hmm. She had a lot of information. And then there was Jeffrey. And then there was breakout groups you know, and things mm -hmm. like that. And so, and whatever was going on in the background, you know. So um, I have leaned into that and it really has changed. It's like some of these upside down ones just, you know, put the cherry on top of the mm -hmm. reading, you know, and pulls that more clearly information that way. So, and I want to let you know, I've benefited from that and I have sat and taught myself it. And not only that experience um, and certain, you know, experiences and situations, emotions, you know, people involved help you figure out the symbolism mm -hmm. to the people cards, things like that. I mean, all of it, it's always a process of learning. Right. But it's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's, I really enjoyed just, it. It ought to be just fun and it ought to be, I want to come in and see what this is. It's not, this is going to solve every problem I've ever had because I can tell you for damn sure that's not the truth. Uh, but I also, my classes tend, the people, all right people tend to be in the right class. The right people that can support, help, understand, have been through it or have not been through it. And they're going, oh my God, I've learned so much from that. And we are forming a new course. It's probably going to, if it doesn't happen soon. And the other thing is, of course, that's a very limited size. So you... Uh, you're not like with 45 other people up there. So is that the sacred geometry geometry one? No, you're that's starting? the that's the that's the new one. I mean, and I redid my. I had sent in my little web guru, whoever's going to meet in a couple of days, Anjali, and she went in and straightened my website out because it was having some problems, and they were way beyond anything I could deal with. So now, when you go to my front page, it takes you right to where you need to go 
to see the different courses. It also takes you to the resource material for uh, numerology, uh, dowsing for um, the violet flame, which is the protection prayer I send to everybody who takes a class. And sort of we go over what you need to do to do that. So that it's kind of all out there. You can see what it is. And if it intrigues you, come on over. And if if you feel like I've got my I've got what I need, I don't need that, then that's fine. But we put it out there so you can grab hold of it. I would hope they'd visit because I get so many lovely stories like Amy, where she's now not doing tarot or anything else. She's working on her new skills. And there that happens to people. You know, they, they have to kind of hang the cards up for a little bit and take what they've learned from it and move on. It's a whole universe. Well, allow me to say that I haven't hung up the cards. I just had to disengage. Mm -hmm. It was a requirement. For your new, for your new discipline. Right. Well, so, right. And it was so much fun hosting, you know, we almost made it a year, our group, there was, you know, mm -hmm. like four of us. And then Cindy came in on the tail end and we almost made it a year, you know, but I had to, you know, shut it down because, you know, I was just doing different things. Right. But, um, I got that, you know, notion to do it when I was, you know, taking a mediumship course because I had to practice and, mm -hmm. you know, so the people in the class and that one lasted, that was during COVID and that one lasted, I think it was like seven months, but it was so worth a while. It was so nice getting to know people and talk mm -hmm. to like-minded people and share uh, experiences. And then when, you know, we were practicing, mm -hmm. they would help figure out who we were talking to, mm -hmm. you know, and even when somebody was absent, they would relay it to the absent person in our group. And it was about the person that was absent that wasn't there that mm -hmm. day, but you know, anyway, we would figure all that out. It's, it's just, it's just wonderful how things work out. And I'm just so glad that I got to be a part of your your journey and yours is you were on your journey long before I met you. But uh, I want to encourage everyone to understand that if you stay with this, the stones and visit us every day, you don't have to visit at 11, 11 when this premieres in the morning. You can come in any time. I mean, once it's up there, it's up there and it's all on a playlist. And if you've missed the first few stones, you can go back and catch up with them. I mean, none of these are very long. I think this is about the longest show I've done with this, but Amy has so much stuff going on around her that I really want to give her a chance to talk about what it is. And yeah. with that, I think I am going to say goodbye. Okay. Thank you so much, Nancy. It was so much bye -bye. fun.